All right, take one. All right, so you can see like the whole place. We just, I scouted this area before and it was right before daylight. It was during daylight savings time. We just switched. My timing is just off. We're not getting as much light over there as I thought originally, but it still looks really good. So it looks like what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to shoot everything there first and then come over here. Because what I was thinking is that we're gonna get some stuff here on like the couch and then we're gonna get some uh, by the windows. We can uh, move some of those plants and get some along the walls, but we're gonna see what happens. So we got about an hour and a half to do this. Let's uh, see what happens. <laughs> What's up YouTube, I'm back. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and change it up for this video this time. Right now we are in downtown Los Angeles in a photo studio. And this time, instead of just on my regular Fuji that you guys have been following, I'm gonna shoot on Fuji and a uh, film to see if it's true that you become a better photographer if you slow down. We're gonna see what happens. For those who are new on the channel, I'm Jay. And on this channel, I shoot with working models across LA. You know how like you're supposed to only show your best work? I don't do that on this channel. I go ahead and just show everything so we can all learn together. At the end of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and post the ones that I might post on Instagram. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. Tell me what you think. And today I am working again with the lovely Jessica. You've seen her in a couple of episodes. So why am I working with her again? Other than the fact that she's awesome. She's really easy to work with. Like we're really well coordinated. She keeps, uh, keeps me up to date. We all agreed to get uh, tested. And so, you know, it's that kind of professionalism on set. As one man band producing this stuff, I need people I can kind of rely on because I kid you not, this is the seventh time I've been trying to book this shoot. This is just life with uh, all the schedules for the models, the assistants, the studio bookings, my own schedule. It kind of like always breaks down, but those are the things you gotta roll with unless you got a big budget. On this shoot, we're gonna be, wow, there's a rave going on outside, nice. So on this shoot, we're gonna go with a little bit more intimate, sexy look. Jessica is like really versatile. She's, the, I'm really glad to always be working with her because hey, she's just a nice person who doesn't want that on set. Another reason you book with people, people you trust, okay? So you guys ready? Yeah. All right, we're gonna do it and we're gonna jump right into it and try to beat the sun. <laughs> okay, you're rolling. Take four. Cool, we're gonna jump into it. Love it. You got me playing Go ahead and turn your face a little bit towards me, but your eyes still off. Great. Very sexy, just a little bit eyes off now. It's like totally lying back there. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and pull down a little bit and then sort of turn towards me with your upper body. Let me see a little bit more. There we go. Great. Go ahead and almost like you're about, yeah, there we go. I was gonna say almost about to fall asleep. This is just a nice lazy Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Paint you like one of the French ladies, yes. Great, let's go ahead and switch it up. If you can actually um, almost sit, yeah. I kind of like that cutesy look. It's not like cross leg, but you know what I mean? Yeah, there we go. She's got it. That fast, she's got it. What I was trying to do right there when I saw her tossing her hair, I was just trying to catch her a moment. Great, go ahead and uh, keep your eyes off of me and let's try one more time, see if it uh, comes out. Got it. So the first few shots are always like a warm up. In this case, we knew we were headed towards lingerie, so it made sense to start with more layers first and not mess up the hair and makeup. Now for the editing, there wasn't much in terms of me wanting to change the flavor. Really there was just a few exposure things that bugged me as a nip picking photographer. <laughs> So for me to get comfortable with lingerie modeling, it probably took me like a year of getting experience with all types of modeling to get comfortable with it, especially because me personally, I'm not like a sexy person in my mind. Like I'm a very like tomboy person. So being able to do lingerie just took me like kind of really being a character, like being like channeling like Victoria's Secret or Maxim or other models I really like in my own mind. And so it's really nice when the photographer is really like relaxed about it, gives you space to change, 
Really it's about being comfortable with the photographer and the crew and just being able to be natural and relaxed. So I'm gonna go and switch off to the film camera. Okay, so I got this camera at Goodwill for about 35 bucks. Uh, I think it's about 45 years old, maybe up to 50 now. It is so loud and I kid you not, this is actually one thing I like. The new X, uh, Fuji X-T4, it's super quiet shutter. But what I don't like about that on the shoot is that the model can't hear when I'm like firing. And so I kind of want them to be able to hear it. I'm pretty darn sure we're gonna be able to hear this one. You tell me, all right? Watch when I turn it on. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is it, anticlimactic. Kind of worried. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do the exact same one. <laughs> so I'm gonna shoot a lot slower, slower this time because I only have a certain number of shots. There we go. I'm guessing you can hear this. <laughs> the fact that I have to slow down, I'm guessing it's not something she's used to. Great. Great. I'm gonna do about three more shots. So this is actually even faster than I was expecting, but Oh, I love that. That is so cute. Okay. So, in all this excitement, here's the huge thing. I've been underexposing because this has a meter and it doesn't automatically do it. So, can you give me that cross-legged uh, one again? That really cute one. Love it. Cool. Okay. Let's go and have one like, uh, let's go and completely change it. Can, actually, can you give me one line down again? This for the film camera. Let's go and see if, how it looks. If I... And right now, this is a cheaper lens. It's still gonna be a really high quality, but it's at, it goes at f3.5. So it's really dark inside this viewfinder. So I'm slightly worried that it might be hard to like, it's easy to must focus. Okay. Oh, I love it. Great, let's go and switch up again. Let's go and see how that actually comes out because you on, the, on YouTube might be able to see it before I do. I gotta admit, I really love how that film artifact on that first shot came out. And you probably notice how grainy the shots are, and that's just film. But it's also the fact that the room is really dark, and this is ISO 400 film. Film doesn't take well to being pushed up a stop, and often there's a color cast right here that uh, film printers would normally correct for you. So what's wrong? She's torn, but she's not in the right building, and I'm worried that please don't be across like all the downtown LA. Okay. Crud, she's on Hill. Hill's not that far. No, no, no. You're only about two blocks away. You're only about two blocks away. Wait, one second, one second. Let me, let me double check. Uh oh, it's half a mile away. It's crud. Oh no. Okay, one second. Uh, we'll figure it out, but mostly no one's gonna blame anyone. You're fine. <laughs> Happened is that like, uh, I sent her the wrong address? <laughs> because it looks like there's two studios. This studio owns two locations, pretty close. So I didn't double check when I sent that out. We're about uh, 30, 40 minutes behind or what? And so we're in a little bit of the light, but we have plenty. We'll be able to get the most of the shots we want. And if we don't, it's fine. It's just the way it goes. You just roll with it. And I'm sure we're just gonna get good stuff anyways. I'm recording. So apparently we're not allowed to step on the carpets with our shoes, so we gotta put the booties on. Very fashionable. All right. Ugh. It is not my house, so I will respect their wishes. Going back to digital. Right now what I'm seeing is that the sun just clipped, so what I was hope like earlier, I kind of like the way the sun was just like sprinkling that area. You have some like, hot spots. Now we're gonna go and switch to this. It's gonna be going in the road. Yeah. I kind of like that the light is hitting from behind her on this one. And suddenly got, life just got a lot easier with autofocus. Go ahead and get you onto the edge of the seat so you can kind of lie back. There we go. Yeah. Love that. Very relaxed. Great. Got it. Cool. We're going to do about five more. Love that. Five. Four. Three, two, and this back on me, great. 
Got it. Cool. All right, we're gonna switch it up. Uh, let's go ahead and do that costume where you go and take it off and we're gonna move back. I'm really glad we got to do the close-up window lighting because the super soft light from the window really smooths out the skin in these shots. I am going to switch up. I have a set of keys. Do you think we can uh, tear it with a set of keys? Off. What a beast. <laughs> and I have you, like, here is this white spot. Ooh, whoa, let's not destroy that. Uh, let me see how it looks if you were to, like, be up against that white wall right there. Yeah, this is gonna be, like, almost... It doesn't make a lot of sense, but let's see how it actually looks. All right, I'm switching to the long lens. Um, no real reason. <laughs> love it. Great, let's have the eyes off. I love that her eyes are just in shadow. It's a very kind of, like, mysterious, sexy look. Great, love it. Great, go ahead and turn your uh, waist away from me a little bit. Uh, other way, side. Great, love it. Kinda like the way the curves are working out. Very sexy, love it. It's gonna be a close up. Great. Great. And three, two, one. Last one. Got it. You know what is um, what I really liked about this conversation right now? Her hair and her like uh, the lingerie. It's this golden brown that's with the green and white around her. It's like this complimentary thing that's going on, right? Honestly, that was not planned. That's just her coordinated really well, and it just came out. So. <laughs> okay. So on a couple of shots, I think what's happening. Um, and this is nothing on Jessica, this is something that's like my job to tell her. I think because you're lying down with that pillow or something behind your back, it's actually flat, like widening out your hips. So I think you either have to twist a little bit for that or either straighten out. I love it. Great. This, ha this color coordination is amazing right now. Uh, can you stand behind the couch? And so you can arch back, you're just gonna like uh, support yourself on the, on the thing. Yeah. Let's go ahead and see if, uh... yeah. There we go, love it. Nice. I love the way that tattoo is coming off here too. Love it, yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move around. I'm just gonna change it up. Great. So this color coordination is just great with the soft brown lingerie and the off-white background and the green plant accents. Now the off-white could be a little competing against her, so I had to balance out that exposure in post by pulling it down and then sort of lifting her up in the foreground. All right, so on the topic of scheduling as a model, you are gonna end up with a lot of random castings and jobs. I've had so many jobs that are like, we had somebody cancel, can you come today? Or you have a couple castings in the week and you're having to drive and nobody's paying you for this. It's just kind of part of the job. You drive, you meet the people, and you hope you get the job. It can be a little annoying sometimes, but it's part of booking jobs because it's worth it if you go to three or four castings and you book that thousand dollar job. Then it's like, oh, I don't care that I had to drive all over the city. Something I noticed, uh, especially since I got this camera, Jessica was, was used to the last camera and every time it beeped, you can also hear a click. Right now, uh, Jessica sometimes hits the pose and moves on before I actually fire the shot because the shutter is so quiet. Yeah. She's hearing the autofocus beep, but not the shutter. Go ahead and stay right there. We're gonna switch off to the film camera. Back in the game. This is one thing I do like about this. It's forcing me to get my um, focal length before I start shooting. I have to actually look at it. Now I'm focusing and kind of liking this, but I have to remember to be shooting at the right. It's asking for 1 30th and I have to shoot at 1 30th there. Great, hold one second. I'm gonna switch off lenses. What's happening is that um, the lens is at 3.5 at and the light is low enough that I actually need something faster. So I'm gonna switch off to the 50 millimeter prime. It is 1.4, so that should be enough to handle all this with some of the... <laughs> Ooh, lost a shot. Great. I'm starting to see why a lot of film photographers prefer to shoot prime. This is a lot easier. Got it. Okay, 
Yeah, let's get that back shot again. Great. Hold that. I need to focus on her face. This actually takes time now. And let's do one more for safety. Same uh, pose, please. So what I'm worried about is that the focusing frame is not super easy to see on this uh, old lens. So we're good. We're going to call it a wrap on that post. But yeah, I'm not... Um, the way the focusing frame works on these, uh, some of these old film cameras, it's bright in the center and dark around. So when I have her face on the side of the shot, it goes dark on her face and I can't necessarily see what I looked at. So I try to focus on the face and move the frame, but that's risky. <laughs> You can see here how t uh, film tends to be a little less sharp than digital, which can be good or bad. In this case, I think it works either way. It's just sort of a different flavor. I think, well, it's a little bright. It's not necessarily complimentary. So I kind of, I mean, the thing is, we look through these, uh, the wardrobe, they all work really well by themselves. But yeah, when you come on set, Sometimes it surprises you or sometimes it clashes a little bit with what's going on. Let's go with the shorts, the lace, uh, the lace top and bottom. And then we're actually gonna switch off with the shorts come off and then the sweater comes on. So let's see what happens. So uh, we're on our second, uh, we're doing the wardrobe chain. That light is moving way faster than even I assume. Uh, ends in about 45 minutes for the studio. But it looks like the light's gonna end in about less than 10. It's looking pretty good. One of the things I'm kind of like concerned about is that since the light is dropping so low, that film that we're using is 400 ISO. So it's not doing it. And with film, you can't push it up like you can with digital. 400H looks really good when you overexpose it one stop. You can't expose it over one stop. We're barely getting what we need. And I'm shooting at F 130th of a second. I don't think it's gonna come out blurry for the YouTube video because those images are pretty small, but you gotta really commit when you're shooting a film and know exactly what you're going for and you know how to like set up everything. Cool, but let's go and see how it comes out. There's some light right here. Uh, let's go and show that real quick. I didn't like that at all. It looks too way fake and artificial, but let's go and uh, pan back to her. For some reason, it is working just right with the sun right now. So I'm okay with this. Let's do it. It's coming off really orange. It's kind of like super warm, but I think this is working really well. Very cute. Let me get a couple more. Can you go ahead and uh, spread your knees a little bit further apart? It's a little bit straight. There we go. Cool. Love it. Great. Let's keep going with that. Just half close up now. Great. Very cute. And three more. Three, two, Now this outfit is obviously a really big difference from the wardrobe from earlier. This one's way more casual. And I was wondering if it would clash with the background, but it looks like both fit really well. And for the editing here, uh, the room light was tungsten, so you get this deep orange cast on the skin. I edited away most of that, but I left a little warmth on her. But overall, yeah, there's a much more cyan tone that I uh, put throughout the photo. So my thoughts, I love this camera. I've had it like for about a year. I got it for like 35 bucks at a Goodwill. But, like you always hear from like instructors that you should shoot on film because it slows you down and forces you to like force the composition. And that's the sort of way I learned on the black and white film. I think it's good for like one or two sessions, honestly. The main thing is that LCD, which you can't see here, but on the LCD, yeah, you just get feedback and just learn really quickly. When I get a paid shoot, um, I can't mess around with film because I can't risk that. On this, I love the feeling. Like I love the feeling so much, the sound, the way it feels, how heavy it is. I'm just gonna ask Shannon to hold it with one hand and tell me what she like, was that what you expected? Uh, no, I definitely like right? dropped my hand right? a, little bit, a little bit. And it just feels good in your hand, but it's the world is the, the way it is. You saw that one when the light came down, I did not even finish 36 shots on this uh, roll of film but you, we could barely see in the room and I was still shooting with this. But I'm not giving up on this. I'm gonna keep going with this. I love it. I'm, a, I wanna, I'm just super excited to see how this uh, comes out. Go ahead and march out a little bit if you can, if it's not uncomfortable. So, uh, you often hear me asking like if it's comfortable because sometimes what looks around the camera is like really painful, a lot more painful than you think. So I'm always aware of that kind of stuff now. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. You can't tell from just looking. <laughs> I 
You know what's kind of funny? If someone does see it, it is exactly like the step movie uh, trope of like the naked lady across the front. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I turn off this better. If this is definitely something you can't do with film, and this still works. Love that. Great. Believe it or not, for, for the audience, I'm still actually overexposing. Believe it or not. As dark as it is, because it's super dark for you right here now, right Jessica? It's like super dark. Great. Got it. Oh, that's great. Hold that. Got it. Cool. You know what, Ali? Can we actually have you on this couch? <laughs> Actually, I think this. Uh, can you go ahead and scoot uh, like your, your butt onto the edge of the seat so then it forces you to arch a bit? Let's go ahead and turn the seat a little bit. Right there, perfect, good. Like you almost kind of hit behind my shoulder just a little bit. Great. Like that, let me go and focus. It's taking a while focusing your face, I'll let you know. Got it. Oh, I love that. Hold that for a couple of shots. And right now I'm having a hold because the, even in this light, the autofocus is barely able to keep up. Got it. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and switch up. So you can see just how crazy well the low light works out for the Fuji X-T4 here. I tend not to worry too much about uh, noise nowadays. I don't even use the noise remover in editing, honestly, especially not for YouTube. My thing is kind of, if people are staring at the noise in your photo, then either the noise is just that bad or maybe the photo isn't interesting enough to, you know, be worth even denoising. Alright, take seven. It's the light. Okay, I think we're actually... Oh, it's still there. This is great. This looks... Uh, uh, Shannon, does this now look fine? It is super dark in real life. This is fine. So I think we're done with a uh, film for today too. Oh wow, okay. And while she's preparing, I love those candid kind of uh, shots. No. <laughs> um, should I give you a... Yeah, yeah. I'll love this. The hair looks amazing. Actually, just I decided not to edit the video uh, here and make it brighter because I wanted you to see that it really was that dark in the room in real life. Way too dark for film. And if you're wondering why I'm not using flash, it's because I rented the studio for only two hours and I just didn't have the crew to move faster enough with that kind of setup. But I am looking to do artificial lighting in my next video, so yeah. subscribe for that. Touch your head. I love that. Adjust your eye back on me. Great. Go ahead and uh, tilt your hair a little bit more forward. It's super dark, but I'm still getting a very usable uh, shot on this. Oh, I need to bump up the ISO a little bit. One sec. This is what I don't like when I have to uh, stop shooting for a second to fiddle with technical stuff. But luckily, I think uh, Jessica is used to this kind of thing now. Say for the record, the human being doesn't care. Got it. Okay, let's go ahead and just face me like a uh, roll over a little bit. So you're just uh, towards like, actually, yes, perfect. Love it. We're gonna get three of these. Is the hair flat? I... One one ninth of a second. All right, that was the last shot of the day. Let's see if the uh, superhuman holding skills held out. We're gonna go ahead and like call it a wrap. So these are the ones I might post on Instagram. You tell me which one you like best. As for why I chose them, one big reason is definitely variety between the shots. I like the kind of contrast in the photo set. And second, honestly, it's what I'm feeling right now. And sometimes that's just how it is. You like what you like. So that was a really fast shoot. You can see like from the lights, we have to turn on the lights now so we can actually see. I did not even finish that 36 shot roll on the film camera by the time the sun went out. With the digital, we just kept going because you know, technology marches on. I love that film camera feel. I still shoot with it. I want to keep shooting with it and I will keep shooting with it. But you know, thank you to Jessica. Thank you to Shannon. And actually she's rescuing this entire shoot. I don't 
just trust me on that. You know, for if you're aspiring model and aspiring photographers, like kind of listen, talk to the models and learn from them. You want to talk to your models because like she mentioned uh, before, you gotta be comfortable with the photographer if you're like in an intimate kind of like uh, dress or lingerie. Guys, just imagine yourself, okay? Really picture it, all right? You feel uncomfortable just with me just talking about it? Think about that. Reach out to her. She's out here in uh, Southern California. She's available for a book. If you're a beginner photographer, she's gonna be pulling you along. She's a nerd. I'm not even insulting you when I say that. She is a nerd. We're literally talking about building computers on the set. Guys, if you're wondering, I was like, oh, is this laundry bar? What was it like? Uh, we talked about like building gaming computers. Yeah. Okay, not a joke, okay. That was a really great shoot. I'm super excited to see how the photos come out because I really want a film to win out. Thank you everyone, that was a really great shoot. And make sure you like, uh, like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Every time someone subscribes, it really makes my day, it truly does. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Hey.